I'd like to uh, welcome all of you to the first uh, Belta Tessel uh, Toronto uh, web conference. Uh, and still, uh, once again, I'd like to uh, say that that's a great opportunity for for the teachers before the coming school year. And I'm really very glad to uh, introduce one of my dearest PLN members, Rosalie Serra, uh, whom I follow on Twitter, on Facebook. Uh, Rosalie Serra is an educator who works as an EFL, ESL teacher, ELT consultant, and materials writer, Cambridge examiner, and e-moderator in Brazil. She's also a psychologist and a blogger. She has a postgraduate degree in applied linguistics and is currently doing long distance MA in ELT at the University of Reading, UK. Uh, she blogs at uh, rosalisera.blogspot.com. I'm going to type it. And now I'm going to give the microphone to dear Rosalie. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes? Does that sound good? No background sound? Okay. Hello everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you so much. I feel really honored to be here. Um, when, uh, when I sent my proposal to, to Belta conference, I had no idea Tyson would uh, make me uh, one of the plenary speakers and uh, it's my first time as a plenary speaker online okay although I'm used to to delivering webinars and uh, I feel comfortable because um, I see here most of you um, my friends and PL, PL, PLN connection okay so thank you very much Congratulations, Tyson. Congratulations, John, Jamie, and all Belt and Toronto people for the organization of such an amazing event where people from all over the world can join for free. Okay? Uh, I hope you enjoyed the session. I was uh, reading and writing out two of my great questions. Okay? And I think we should start. Okay? Let's move on. So, uh, my session is about reading and the uh, creative writing. So, um, I'm talking. I'm going to talk about uh, extensive reading, active reading, and the uh, creative writing, and how we could integrate them in our EFL ESL class. So, uh, the outline of my session will have some uh, basic concepts. We'll have, uh, uh, the, uh, I'll show you the difference between active and extensive reading, how literature uh, is a good resource to be used in the classroom. We'll talk about creative writing, and I'll show you an integrated lesson plan uh, I uh, designed using literature and uh, creative writing. Okay, so let's move on. Um, I, I found this quotation on the internet which says the best way to improve your knowledge of a foreign language is to go and live among its speakers. The next best way is to read it extensively in it. So what I mean, what does it mean? I understood by this that the more we show passion for reading, the more we read for pleasure the more our students will grab this idea and follow up. Okay, this is just food for thought. You may agree or not with this. Moving on, uh, we have those basic concepts to work with. Creative writing, read, uh, reading and writing, and creative writing, extensive reading, literature, reading, readers, and active reading. So, reading. What do we understand for reading? 
according to a dictionary, according to one of the dictionaries you use a lot, reading is the understanding of the written text, okay? It's perceiving meaning, it is comprehending what is there to say to us, okay? This is reading. So, if you are literate and you read, you understand what written text means. So, and the, what's the difference um, between uh, extensive reading and uh, active reading? So, active reading uh, has to do with the, the building meaning uh, process. And extensive reading has to do with reading for pleasure and uh, also it has to do with learning a language through reading for pleasure. Uh, if you look up the meaning of those two concepts, you find different, uh, different thoughts and uh, well, here and there uh, some differences, okay? But for me, the, the, the best which applies to what I believe are those ones. Extensive reading, reading for pleasure, and uh, a tool to help us to learn a language. Yeah? And active reading is a brain minding process. Okay? Let's move on. So, what about the literature? How, what do you understand about uh, literature? Okay? Actually, literature uh, has to do with uh, stories, poems, and uh, pieces of cultural, cultural um, written texts that are spread all over the society and which talk about the society in terms of the reality of fiction. Uh, poems uh, and or prose, they have to do with uh, what the society uh, how the society behaves, for example, okay? If you pick up, for example, a Charles Dickens book, uh, it's clear that he talks about what was going on at those times. The same happens to John Steinbeck, to Victor Hugo, to Brazilian uh, writers such as Machado de Assis and uh, any of them, okay? Also, the contemporary writers. Any questions about literature? I think it's pretty clear, okay? So, reasons why we teachers should use literature in the classroom. Before we talk about the reasons, I'd like to know how many of you use literature in your classroom. Can you please chat in the chat box? Type in the chat box, do you use literature with your students? Yeah? Do, oh, great. Okay. Okay, so some of you don't have the opportunity because of the audience. Okay, I got the idea. So let's see why we should use literature. These are my beliefs, and uh, if you have any other, you can share with us, okay? So literature encourages interaction. So when you read a book, you take a book, and uh, uh, you open a book, you start reading a poem or, or a story or some piece of information, and you get involved with this book, with this text, okay? Let's imagine this story. I think most of you have read uh, Alice in the, Wood in the Wonderland, okay? So how many of you remember uh, the garden uh, and the other characters? and imagine yourself into that world, okay? So it is interaction. Your feelings and emotions come up. You picture scenes in your mind if you don't have pictures, for example. You make predictions. You make inferences. So this is real interaction, okay? So literature expands language awareness. How? Because usually, 
uh, literature books bring very good uh, pieces of language. Usually, uh, with a few exceptions, I hope, uh, usually books, literature books, bring very good vocabulary, very good uh, standard language, or even not standard, but richer language. And it's important, at least for me, it's important that my students um, are aware of these two. Although they are not going to use, uh, for example, in everyday English, some of what they read, but the awareness of this language is as important as the one they should have in their mother tongue. Okay? So it's good for vocabulary, for uh, constructions of sentences, of paragraphs, and uh, everything regarding writing, reading and writing. Literature is authentic material. Of course it is. Literature is, as I said before, uh, the, the, the mirror the, is what the people write about a particular culture, about a particular country. If you read the, um, Hans Christian Andersen, his fairy tales, they were written in Denmark, okay? If you see, uh, if you pick up uh, uh, books from, if you pick up, for example, Oscar Wilde's books, how much of Ireland has he written about? And the same has when you pick up like a Shakespeare or any other author. Okay, so it's authentic material as it uh, shows us uh, pieces of cultural awareness and a lot of information about countries, their habits, and uh, people, language, how they speak, how they behave. Sometimes we find like uh, uh, pieces of vocabulary that we have never heard about, and it's so wonderful when um, we get used to it. I remember I was, uh, I had just entered the university, and uh, I had to read the book The Mother, from, uh, written by Maxim Gorky, and I was so amazed because of uh, the new words I learned. I was reading in my in my language. I was reading in Portuguese, but even in Portuguese, it was uh, a very good surprise for me. I have been always an avid reader, and uh, being an avid reader, I usually like uh, get into the plot of the story, get into the book, get into the the scene. I picture myself in, uh, in those places. And uh, because they are authentic material. And uh, when I have the opportunity to travel, I confess that, oh my gosh, I remember this place from that particular book. It's so amazing. Okay? So, literature is also motivating. Why? Because it has good pieces of language, because of the, the, the new things they bring to our students. Okay? the new pieces of information, and uh, because, and because we, students can interact with the books. Yeah? Uh, wrongly, people say that due to the internet, young people have not read a lot. Uh, research, at least in Brazil, has shown that we had more young people, uh, children and adolescents reading more than ever and they read books. They read books that turn into films, or they read books that uh, were first filmed. They read good literature, they get used to it, and uh, this kind of motivation uh, comes from uh, different sources, including you, the teacher, including me. I know my students, If uh, when I, I get a group that uh, my stu where students don't like reading, they at least agree to read a uh, reader a book because they see my passion and I can show them uh, the marvelous thing, things they can do because of reading. Okay, so having said all that, do you think that reading is a passive skill or um, an active skill? What do you think? Passive or active? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, 
although we learned that the, the active skills are writing and speaking and listening and reading are passive, uh, I believe that reading is a very active skill. After all, you get information, you make inferences, you have your emotions uh, flowing, okay? Uh, sometimes you kind of, uh, uh, you cry, you get scared, you get involved, you laugh. How many times I have written on my book, sometimes I complain with the author, I argue with them. I am, I, I am a very interactive reader, <laughs> by the way. Okay, so uh, our reaction to what we read makes uh, reading to be a real active skill. Okay. Readers. How many of you set readers for, for your students? Do you use readers? Yes. Okay, good. Me too. Okay. Second question. Do you think readers could be or are as good as the full text? Do you think readers are a good idea? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the definition for readers. We have uh, readers are books that have had the language level simplified to help second language learners read them. They are made to cater for all levels, levels from beginners to, to advanced. Okay. This is the good thing of, about reading, about readers. Okay. Uh, oh, we have a different publishers who you, and the readers nowadays come with the CDs or CD rooms and they can be even more motivating and um, interactive with the students. Now, why extensive graded reading? Why extensive graded reading? Why should we use reading? Um, language to literature is accept, could be accessible and enjoyable of read, uh, by the use of readers. Why? Because if you, if you have a certain level of students and you ask them to read the book, if it was the original book, it could be very, very frustrating for them. Because of the amount of words, because of the level of vocabulary, because some students come to me, for example, and say, Teacher, how many words, how many pages? Uh, is the book thick or is the book thin? Okay, so students ask, ask questions like this. So uh, the more you set readers for the, the, the correct level of the students, they would feel more pleasurable the, uh, the, the action of reading. So the second point is exactly what I just said. Readers, we have readers available for any level of learners. We have sometimes biographies for beginners and for advanced students. And of course, what will be different? The same person, different kind of vocabulary, different kinds of tests, different kinds of uh, pictures, everything. Okay? So, Readers also develop, uh, read, a reader develops good English reading habits. Why? Because once the students get used to readers, to reading for pleasure, uh, they will find that they are progressing in some way, okay? They, they will find that they are acquiring vocabulary. They will be surprised that their writing skills will improve, okay? And uh, also, the sense of achievement, I mean, the sense of achievement, uh, after all, will be quicker, okay? Also, read, reading is an activity that can be done out of the class. You, can, you do not necessarily have to have your students reading in class, okay? Uh, I had an experience in a school where um, they, uh, they had two readers for semester, and as for the first reader, one should be done in the classroom. 
the more uh, activities I created, but the students really didn't like to read in class because for them to come to the classroom twice a week for an hour and 15 minutes, they want movement, they want more interaction. So if they had to spend time in silence reading, they'd rather do it at home or in any other place because every person has its, his own style about reading and about learning, okay? So, readers also incorporate a content-based approach to language and learning, okay? So, there is the content of the book and uh, there, is the, there are the words, there are grammar features in the book, there are sentences, there are tenses. So, content-based approach and the language learn at the same time. And there are lots of other benefits. What are the benefits that I, 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 I didn't mention here that you think you think that could be that readers could bring to our students? Any other benefits? Can you share please? De develop confidence, great one Tyson. And this confidence developed it could be for writing and for speaking as well as we are going to see. Connect with other readers, very, very good. Yes. Motivation, okay. Cultural awareness, yes, Hannah. Yeah, I think for me it's one of the most amazing things. Indeed, Miguel, I do agree. Excellent, excellent. Good. So you've predicted everything I'm going to talk to you. Okay, let's move on. Thank you very much for your contribution. Okay, what about creative writing? Does any of you have any idea? Idea what creative writing means. Can you please share in the chat box? Absolutely. Yes, guys. Thank you. Okay, so creative writing is the kind of write that express express feelings, okay, emotion, thoughts, and anything that it has nothing to do only with conveying information. So instead of giving information, creative writing is more uh, like, uh, I remember Luis Otavio Barro saying, it's like writing from the heart. It's like, it's something like we do, uh, we bloggers do when you write a, a blog post uh, or a blog post or an article or a Something, okay? So creative writing is something that comes from the heart. It flows naturally. It flows uh, from our thoughts, from our heart, and the purpose is not conveying information. I will show you some pictures, and I'd like you to say, what, uh, what, why do you think these pictures have to do with creative writing. Can you see these pictures? For example, this first one here. What do you think they are?
schools, letters, diaries. Mm -hmm. Letters like love to get delivered by the post, <laughs> cards, no. Good. Mm. So true. Okay, I'll tell you what they are. These are notebooks I collect, okay? Some people might be surprised because you know I'm like a tech savvy and I'm used to using a lot of technology. I save a lot of paper, but I do collect notebooks and I still like writing notebooks. Uh, for example, I'm planning my, my daughter's wedding and in one of those notebooks, I, I keep noting, I keep taking notes of everything, okay? Because after that, I give her as a gift. She knows that correct. That's why I am sharing with you, okay? Um, this and this uh, are part of the same thing. This is a scrapbook which was prepared by my daughter uh, when I became 50, 50 years old last year, okay? So uh, she and a, uh, my daughter and her friend had the, the, the idea of preparing these scrapbooks with the things I like and having guests and friends of mine to write uh, congratulation messages for me, wishing me happy birthday. Okay, so um, this is my daughter and my son and uh, this is what my daughter wrote to me and uh, we share the same passion for fashion, for things, for girlish things. And uh, another friend wrote here because like me, he likes traveling and uh, he wrote me a message. And another cough addicted person wrote here and it was really, really nice. So uh, I shared this picture because in some way it's a very piece of, a very good, a good piece of creative art. Not done by students but done by people like us, uh, ordinary people, okay? So let's move on. Okay, so creative writing. Can you imagine what kind of creative writing we could do? I just brainstormed some here in this wood cloud, something that I've done and uh, I have done more, but I didn't type them. But creative writing could come from, could become posters, could be written in paper, in live typing on the web, could come from, uh, could be an acrostic poem, a flipped book, could be done in, uh, in platforms or apps like Glogster or Smore. Free writing could be a scene of a book or a film. You could narrate uh, uh, something and your students could write a story. There are many, many ideas. And uh, I remember um, watching Malu Chiknarelli session at Rustison and I, I was amazed because I was a student. She was delivering the presentation and uh, she made us to be really creative. I didn't know I was that good student, but you know, I could do the, the, the tasks she said for us. So Malu has very good ideas for creative writing. And I'm sure she will be in her session and she will share with you. Okay, let's move on. So another quotation, a mind that is stretched to a new idea never returns to its original dimension. What do you think of this quotation, what does it mean to you? Can you please share? A mind that is stretched to a new idea never returns to its original dimension. Okay, what do you think this quotation means? Yes, it's about growth. Mm -hmm. Creative enriches, enrichment, 
personal boundaries? Yes, exactly, exactly. It has to do with growth and change. Um, I think it was Heraclitus who said that the waters of a river never stop, that we are in permanent change, yes? So, once your mind changes, well, she will never be the same. We are in permanent change. So, writing is, when we produce a piece of writing, and when you read a book, new ideas come to our mind, and it will change. We, we are constructing, we are building a new subject when we read and when we produce writing. Okay, so this is the idea I'd like to share with you. I will, uh, I don't feel I am the same person when I read a book, after I read a book, because this book has in some way taught me something and made me to know and learn a lot of new things. Okay, so let's move on. Handwriting and cognitive writing process. Okay, so uh, cognitive writing. Cognitive writing. Uh, what does handwriting has to do with cognitive writing? What can you tell me? Why do you think I try to to put handwriting and cognitive writing together? In writing is a process. Exactly, Tyson. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think Tyson got the, the idea. You too, Marijana. Yes, it has to do with critical thinking. Yeah. Absolutely, Teresa. Handwriting has to do to cognitive skills. And cognitive skills have to do with your cognitive behavior. How you learn, how, uh, your learning style, the way you produce, the way you um, get ideas into your mind, the way you learn. So, handwriting, for you to write, you have uh, your cognitive process your cognitive behavior changes. Imagine, for example, um, if you are in my classroom and I, um, I, I play some background sound regarding horror, a horror story, and I, and I keep speaking about uh, a horror story. Like, uh, you enter a haunted house and then you try to open the door, what do you see, what do you feel, what's the room like, what can you touch, what did you try to touch. So, your cognitive behavior, will you will behave according to what I am narrating, and this is what, what your, your hand will produce, your hand right, okay? So, hand writing uses the brain in a way that typing does not. Yeah, let's see, Shara. Okay, so is it clear the, the, the link between handwriting and cognitive writing processes? Yes, any questions? Should I move on? Okay, great. But how many of you are writing with your hands every day? How many of you use notebooks? To write. You do, Marijana. Good. Mm -hmm. You do? Great. Do you think you use more uh, handwriting or type? Or do you type more in your computers or notebooks? What do you do more frequent, frequently? Do you use pen and pencil and paper or you type more? Oh, I'm surprised how many people use handwriting. <laughs> I love writing with pen and pencil, but I confess because of my job, I, I, I really use much more um, type, typing. Okay, so 
Although his writing is important and we love his writing, we have the new era of pen. Okay, writing has been reinvented. Yes, and uh, we have notebooks, we have note cards and other types of writing which are now electronic. With electronic apps and web tools, it's easier for the students to write together. Do you agree with one or, or one of these statements or with the three statements? Yeah. So, writing has been reinvented. Yes, it doesn't mean that what we have learned and taught about writing does not work. Of course, the basic concepts will be all there, but we uh, in the past, we didn't use Twitter, we didn't use Facebook messages, we didn't use email, email WhatsApp, uh, SMS messages, any of, any of those things, okay? So, uh, we have uh, the same basic concepts. For example, let's write a formal letter, let's write a postcard. How many of we here uh, write postcards or letter? We, take pictures, we say what the pictures are about, we send immediately, instantly, okay? And the letters of complaints, we write emails of complaints, we write letters of, we don't write letters of application, but we write emails of application. And uh, uh, we attach a typed letter with a photo or some, something. So this is the reality, okay? And, as for collaborative writing, okay, Twitter complaints, yes, Jen, I've seen a lot, okay, with electronic uh, apps and web tools, it's easier for students to write together. I remember as a learner, when teachers asked me to do collaborative writing, how difficult it was, especially when I got like uh, not that active students, okay, and uh, if it happened, if, if, if I happened to join uh, a lazy student, a lazy fellow, and it was difficult to uh, to share, to, to, to do collaborative writing. And with the electronic apps and devices, and, uh, and mobile devices and the web tools, it's, it's much more easier to do um, collaborative writing. Okay, so how has uh, writing been reinvented? Okay, we have uh, in the past, we had illustrations and texts. Now we have very practical infographics. Um, in the past, we had graphic organizers, but now we have electronic mind mapping. We had paper, now we have e paper and e books. We have note cards, and now we have social bookmarking. We had, for note taking, we have digital notebooks. We have electronic journal diaries like uh, Penzu. We have a lot of other tools. Uh, word processors became web tools and cloud writing apps too. Okay? And for group reports or to share uh, projects, we have Wix and website builders. Yes? This is, uh, I was reading this Reinventing Writing by Vic Davis. She is a contributor of Edutopia. And uh, this is a very, very nice book. I advise you to have a look if possible. Okay? Any more reinventions about writing, guys? Okay. What about the literature and the creative writing? Okay, so I decided uh, if I had more time, I could I could give you lots of ideas about uh, how to use literature in creative writing using pieces of information. But for this presentation, I decided to to share with you something I did last semester with an amazing group with my dream group of students and uh, who happen to be very interested in, interested in reading and writing. Okay, so I'll show you a lesson plan. There will be some links. I think Eva or someone else can post the links I shared in, 
uh, with the, the Delta guys. And but if you do not, if you cannot see the link here, don't worry because uh, after this presentation, I will immediately share it on the slide share. Okay, so um, we chose uh, a book of mice and men. So the level was in upper intermediate one student, okay, whose age were between 15 and 16 years old. There were 12 students in the classroom. They worked in groups of three to produce writing and present orally, okay? I spent a month between the reading of the book and the production of the activity, okay? So, before reading, I asked the students to read the first part of the introduction, okay? Some very small pieces of reading were done in the classroom before the students start reading the book, okay? Let me make it clear because I said that I usually not work with the reading books in class. Okay, uh, so I asked the, the students to read the first part of the introduction and I made sure they understand that uh, there was a problem uh, in a town called wind, okay? Uh, I asked my students to think about what happened, and then I put some sentences in the interactive whiteboards. Lenny killed someone, this is prediction, okay? Lenny hurt someone, Lenny took money from a bank, okay? Also, Lenny took money from someone, Lenny got into trouble with a girl, and Lenny started a fire. I asked them to read the, the back cover uh, with a summary of the story, and, uh, and then I asked them to make inferences about this book. By the way, this book was written by John Steinbeck. He is from, I think, the realistic um, period in the USA. He's uh, an author that I, I, I am very fond of. I like these, these other books like The Fur and The Grapes of Wrath, which are my favorites. And uh, so uh, we agreed, I negotiated with my students that they, they should read a classic book. And this book particularly shows this reader, okay? Let's see. So. To work on vocabulary as a warmer, I wrote this um, word in the interactive whiteboard, mice. So a lot of the word poems came up and uh, I, I posted here one of them, okay? Miserable in human civilization and experience, okay? Then I gave them a, a handout with some words and expressions such as Farm, hen, river bank, throws it away, leaving off the fat of the land, and etc. And ask them to find things in the pictures the book brings. Okay? Then I get I got them to make a list of five other things they could see in the pictures and got feedback from the whole class and had them discussing what's going to happen in the story. So this was the very first thing. Uh, before the students started reading the book, okay? So, uh, then I gave them some time to read the book. If I'm not wrong, I gave them two weeks before they started with the production, okay? So, they had, yeah, they had two weeks to read the book and questions and discuss, and uh, we had questions in a discussion forum on ad mode. This is something I'd like to share with you once more. I am a, a, a teacher who uses that model very often because very frequently, very, very frequently, because I, I have a belief that I should not share my Facebook with students, okay? So um, I use that model. I have all different groups there. And for these groups, I have tasks, discussion forums, projects posted there. And uh, whenever they wanted to, they posted questions and discussed in a forum, in, in a forum we opened. And I could also uh, see this in my smartphone, okay? Because Edmodo is also an app for a smartphone. And I was also free to interact with my students. This was a good thing because I could like uh, provoke them 
with questions because I, I've read the original book in English and in Portuguese and it was really nice. And in addition, the group was really, really, really good. Okay, so for the post reading, I posted the instructions on Edmodo for them to, to, product, to produce two things. They have to produ produce a collaborative writing on the plot, okay? Uh, and this was done in a post on Smore. Uh, Eva, if only you could share the link for Smore. Uh, the one, uh, I think it's for this slide. This is the production because they, uh, they shared the summary of the plot. They wrote something about the, the author, okay? Uh, they also gave testimonials about it what they read, how they felt about reading a classic book, because most of them were not used to reading it. And also, one of the tasks they had to do was, please, if you could interview the author, what question would you ask him? And my students posted these questions, and this is more, you have the link on the chat box, okay? After that, the next phase was a collaborative story. There are two ways uh, we could do this. This particular group decided to do this in a word format and uh, share in the, on the ad model. After sharing on the ad model, I edited with them and you will be uh, also able to see. So this is this more. These are some parts of this more. You see that they prepared uh, a very nice picture of the, the, the book. They wrote something about the author. They put a trailer of the film. If you haven't seen this film, please do, because it's amazing. John Malkovich is fantastic. And uh, I asked them to, if they could also invent a different end for the story, also uh, why and why not. Okay, so it was a very inter interactive uh, reading activity with a single book. Yeah, so the collaborative writing was a kind of change story about the book in groups of three. As I told you, each group of three students had a different book and I'm sharing this uh, of my family. Students suggested to divide into chapters and each one wrote a certain number of chapters. Okay, so I will show you this on the slide, what uh, these particular three students, Marcus, Julian, and Lucas did, but you have the link here because uh, the, the, their production is on script. Okay, you can click and see what they wrote. For example, Marcus wrote this part here, and uh, Julia wrote this, and Lucas wrote a, li a little more, and uh, finished and wrapped up the story. Uh, is it, it is also possible to do collaborative story in the live typing. This is something I do. Uh, I think Mariana has the link for live typing. It is another, uh, but it is not about this book. It's just for you to have an idea how life type works because it's very, very nice for a very nice tool for collaborative work. But it has to be done in the classroom because uh, once you you enlive, enlive the, the the typing, it will never come back. Okay, so I have uh, um, there was a wireless keyboard. And uh, for example, well, Louisa typed something, and then Lucas typed something, another student typed something, and then uh, the story flows to you. I said, okay, let's stop, let's finish. Um, okay, I don't think, uh, Heva, do you have the link for the live typing? Okay, so if, if you cannot see, uh, if they will be in the, the link will be in my in my slides okay so okay good so 
Uh, what were my conclusions for this uh, lesson plan? For a lesson plan like this, okay? Uh, there were a lot of benefits. Sense of achievement, interaction. They worked on the four skills. They had a lot of good cultural awareness because this story was at the time of the depression in the USA, okay? Very nice vocabulary acquisition. They had a, a very good time. It was a very pleasurable lesson uh, month while we were working on this reader because we had the forums and uh, the best thing they they did not came to the school. They did not come to school to learn English. But as we have the Edmodo platform, and uh, it's me. I like interacting with my students. I don't mind if it's in the school or, or out of the school. I said sometimes to interact with them. It was very very good to interact with them, to provoke them, to have a very intelligent responses from from them. Okay, and uh, I think it, it readers working with the readers with the literature cannot be uh, 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 should not be demotivating, should not be like daunting. Okay, when you say when you first say to a group, for example, I started the semester this uh, Wednesday, two days ago, and when I I had. to talk about the plan for the semester when I said, remember we had two readers this semester, oh, oh my gosh, again. And so I showed them, look, uh, we, you have to read the books, but I promise you we have good books and you have good activities. And then I showed my students, my new groups of students, uh, the different ways I work with the readers. And they were very excited. Oh, Oh, teachers, so you like technology. Can I bring my iPad, my uh, my smartphone, my tablet to the school? Yes, you can. Ask your mom. Tell her I told you to. <laughs> because parents usually don't want their students to bring their mobile devices. And I use both things. I, I, I need to make it clear that I'm not only using uh, writing activities or reading activities with technology. I try to integrate. Vicky Laura said something that touched me very deeply. Uh, she said that uh, on, the, on the contrary of what some people think, technology has humanized learning and teaching. Okay? So, yeah, do you remember the, that slide that I showed you uh, telling that writing has been reinvented? Yes, so uh, it's be, it, perhaps it's more humanized now. I don't know. It's, it's, it, it's a judgment that uh, each of us have to do uh, individually, and we have, to, we have to take into consideration our audience, our students, our school policy, our culture, there are a lot of issues involved, okay? But I teach monolingual groups. Uh, the Brazilian culture is usually very, a very open culture in terms of um, uh, allowing people to do things, okay? And sometimes I have to be a bit tough with my students, otherwise they will misbehave. And, uh, but uh, I do believe that we can do both handwritten, creative writing, and uh, writing using technology. Uh, I do activities with the cardboard, and uh, but my students search things on the web, and they produce on paper with the colored pens, colored pencils, and such and such. Okay, so. I'd like to share with you some sources of inspiration. Sorry, Rosalie. Oh, okay. Rosalie, I'm sorry. Rosalie. Uh, I'm going to have to stop you.
can we uh, okay yes go ahead Viva. Uh, sorry uh, can we uh, wrap up for the next session Rosalie because we're uh, running out of time oh, okay I finished actually okay yeah <laughs> Thank you. Just for you to show you that these are books in case you want to look for them on the Amazon or in any other place. Okay. So, um, uh, am I supposed to to do we have time to answer the questions? Oh, no. Uh, yes, I think we still have a few minutes to answer the questions. If fine, Mariana is asking me how many students work on the same story. Okay, in this particular group, I had the three. Students because they were 12 students, I divided them into four, four groups of three. And so I had in the part of the book, I had three students Marcus, Julia, and Lucas. They were three students. Any other question? Mm. Rosalie, I think it is. Each of the okay. books, yeah. Sorry, there is one question from Teresa. Uh, which of the books have most practical ideas for writing classes? I cannot see the question. Sorry, Teresa. Uh, what's the question? Uh, which of the books have most practical ideas for writing classes? If the books have more practical ideas, is it the question? Okay, writing classes. Okay. Um, uh, books usually bring those uh, the readers. They uh, they have improved a lot, in my opinion, from the times I was a student to up to now. Okay, uh, but uh, I think that they still have uh, uh, activities that students consider to be boring. In my opinion, I, what I usually notice is that my students don't like doing what the book. The readers bring as a writing activity, a writing production, like the answering questions, because this is a model that trauma, traumatized them from school. They don't have good experience at uh, using readers or uh, graded readers at school. Usually, schools are not that careful as we are in language institutes. This is, I'm talking about Brazil, okay? This is the only. Uh, experience I had. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you, Rosalie, for this great inspirational plenary. Uh, that was amazing.